Congressman Brian Higgins from New York is a co-chair of the Cancer Caucus. He joins me now to talk about what Congress can do to help in the fight against cancer. Congressman, welcome. Happy to be with you today. Thanks for having me. Can you tell us a little bit, Congressman, about uh, the, the caucus, how often you meet? I know it's bipartisan, and kind of what are your goals uh, in, this, in this Congress? Well, we meet on a uh, fairly regular basis, the objective of which to make an argument uh, to our colleagues writ large, uh, the importance of funding cancer research, the National Institutes of Health, and the National Cancer Institute. Uh, more money means more research, more research which means more life-saving uh, therapies. And, uh, you know, cancer is, is a bipartisan issue. It affects all Americans, and everybody has been touched by cancer, not only uh, individually, uh, but indirectly as well through family members and friends, et cetera. As far as legislation, you've introduced uh, a lung cancer screening bill. You also have a bipartisan cancer drug parity bill. Uh, that uh, has a number of both Democrats and Republicans on it. Uh, are, are these two pieces of legislation uh, perhaps can move maybe as part of a l larger vehicle? Uh, I, I do think they can. Uh, as you know, cancer and cancer research funding uh, often competes with other issues as well. Uh, so it's incumbent upon the members of Congress in a bipartisan way uh, to instill an appreciation for the importance of funding uh, these initiatives. So we keep trying, we introduce each session, and our number of co-sponsors usually increase. So uh, it's like anything else, it's reaching frequency and we continue to persist toward the goal of, of fully funding cancer research. And I saw that uh, in the past, uh, Senator Tina Smith has offered a, a companion bill. Uh, so you, you hopefully could get through the the House and Senate, because you know it is a it is bipartisan, uh, but it's still hard to pass anything nowadays. That's right. Anything to be anything that becomes law needs uh, same as legislation in both the House and the Senate uh, to pass, and then it goes on to the president for uh, signature. Uh, so it is an arduous process, but having a co-sponsor in the Senate is obviously very helpful to our efforts. Well, you know, recently, as you know, Congressman, the the, the parties came together, we're in divided government. Uh, I was skeptical uh, that a deal was gonna get done at least before we hit the so-called X date and, and the debt limit ceiling showdown uh, did evaporate and, and the House and Senate uh, passed a bill really with big bipartisan majorities. Are you confident that there's gonna be the funding that's necessary uh, for whether that's NIH or other uh, government agencies for cancer research? Well, that was a problem. As you know, uh, there were certain things that uh, my colleagues on the other side wanted to protect, like Social Security, Medicare, and uh, military spending. That put everything else on the table. And had they uh, succeeded in their nearly $5 trillion in cuts, there would have been cuts uh, to the National Institutes of Health and uh, the National Cancer Institute. The good thing is there was uh, a compromise that was negotiated and those things will not be as adversely impacted as they otherwise would have been. What do you, how do you rate uh, the White House Cancer Moonshot uh, Initiative? Uh, we, we've you know, talked to some people and obviously COVID did set back some type of, of cancer research, but, but it seems like the engines are running again. Uh, do you think that the White House is, is this is actually going to lead to some some major uh, technological improvements uh, so that patients can improve their quality of life? Well, like anything else, I mean, goals are very, very important. Uh, and, you know, reducing cancer by 50 percent in 50, 25 years is is a good goal that we all should be pursuing. Uh, the question is, are there resources to help you achieve that? Stating a goal doesn't get you there. Working toward the goal with resource does. So I think that you know the, the administration has done its job by uh, laying out a vision for what it is they would like to be able to see uh, relative to cutting cancer, uh, the incidences of cancer. But the question is, are the resources going to be there? And that's more of an annualized process that uh, members of Congress participate in. 
As, as far as what you're hearing from constituents, uh, and obviously everyone's been been touched by cancer. We all know somebody who either has the, the horrible disease or has succumbed to it. You know, what do you hear uh, on the ground back in your New York uh, district that you bring to Washington uh, to hopefully get through the morass of acronyms and, and that kind of stuff to actually get to solutions? Well, I think it's understanding you know, the pathology of, of cancer and how it works. Less than 10% of cancer deaths are uh, attributed to the original tumor. So it's when cancer metastasizes, when it grows, when it moves uh, to an organ that you can't live without, then it becomes lethal. So early detection is important. Uh, the outlook for someone uh, diagnosed with a, a stage one or two uh, breast cancer diagnosis versus a three or four is profoundly different. So early detection is very important. The other issue that's very important is uh, lifestyles and educating people how devastating uh, smoking can be. Uh, we could reduce 30% uh, of all cancer deaths by the elimination of, of cigarettes and smoking. 80% uh, of, of lung cancers. Uh, so that's a lifestyle, and that's why it's important to have good information out there to the general public about how deadly, literally, uh, cancer uh, smoking can be as it relates to cancer. So it's those kinds of issues and general screening uh, to detect cancer early greatly enhances uh, the survival rate of those who are uh, diagnosed with cancer. Do you get the sense that because early detection is so important, uh, certainly during COVID, uh, a lot of people, including myself, didn't get our annual checkups. Are, are people going back to the, to the doctor's office now? Because if they don't, it's going to be hard to detect anything if the, anything is there. Well, they are, but it's, it's, you know, first of all, before the pandemic, uh, cancer screening was a big problem. And then obviously during the pan pandemic, it was exacerbated. And uh, now getting people to get back into a mode of getting cancer screening uh, is critically important to survival and to save money as well. We spend uh, over $200 billion a year as a country in cancer care. Uh, 1.9 uh, uh, cases of cancer will be diagnosed this year. 600,000 people will succumb, will die uh, from cancer. Uh, so we can certainly do better with those numbers, but it's all about education. It's all about resources. It's all about encouraging people to take the initiative themselves so that they get the screening that's necessary to, if they have cancer, to get an early diagnosis, uh, early stage, uh, which, as I said, will greatly enhance uh, the survival rate of those, uh, of those patients. We do have uh, an audience question uh, for you, if we can put it up on the screen. And this is from John Albaugh, uh, Director of Payer Analytics at McKesson. What is the biggest challenge for Congress to help CMS control costs? CMS obviously being the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services that they decide reimbursement. Uh, what's your, what's your uh, take on that question? Well, the federal government spends about $1.7 trillion a year on health care uh, in terms of Medicare, Medicaid, uh, Veterans Administration, and uh, tax treatment. Uh, it's a lot of money, but it's also a lot of leverage. So using our leverage to the greatest extent possible uh, to ensure that we drive up the quality of care and down the cost of care, uh, it's a lot of money. And uh, the, the federal government you know, has a good chunk of that as it relates to the total bill uh, nationally. So using that as leverage uh, toward the goal to drive down the cost and up the quality, uh, it's like anything else. You know, everything in life is about leverage. And I would argue that the federal government doesn't use its leverage uh, as effectively as it could or should. What about uh, access to health care? You mentioned, you know, that a lot of these treatments, uh, they can be costly. Uh, how can we ensure that underserved communities are, are getting the fair treatment that, that other communities that are well served? Uh, how do we deal with that problem? Yeah, well, I think it's it's about uh, it's about accountability, and it's about uh, ensuring that you know people that buy healthcare, uh, which is already very very expensive, uh, that they get a good quality product, uh, that they have essential services, that they're not denied uh, for for uh, pre-existing conditions. Uh, as you know, uh, one of the component parts to cancer is heredity. 
uh, and that is a determining factor uh, who, of who will get cancer moving forward, not exclusively, but one of the variables that certainly uh, go into causation. Uh, so it's, it's making sure that those people aren't denied coverage because those are the people that need regular screening. Those are the folks uh, that can benefit most, uh, mostly from uh, early detection because, as I said, survival rate increases uh, with uh, you know, earlier stage versus late stage cancer. Uh, the NIH has not had a permanent uh, confirmed director in more than a year. President Biden uh, has uh, nominated Monica Bertagnoli. How important is it to get someone in that position and, and get them, uh, get her confirmed quickly? Well, it's important. We're, we're you know, sad that we're losing Monica as is, uh, is director of the National Cancer Institute. Uh, but uh, the National Institute, uh, National Cancer Institute includes the National Institutes of Health. Uh, so, or the other way around. So Monica will be obviously as a cancer doc and a cancer patient now. Um, she will be a great advocate uh, with Congress uh, for increased research funding generally to the National Institutes of Health, but specifically in continuing uh, to be a, a great advocate for um, funding for the National Cancer Institute. Congressman Higgins, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, appreciate it very much. And that brings us to the end of our Cancer Care Access and Equity Program. A big thank you to our sponsor, City of Hope, and to all of you for watching. For those of you who missed any of the conversations this afternoon, you can catch up on what you missed on demand on our website, thehill.com. I'm Bob Cusack, have a great rest of your day.